Thank you. All right, start the clock. Right. Okay, so you're probably wondering what a native Texan's doing here in Buffalo, New York. The first time I got an email saying, would you consider moving here? I thought the same question. Um, but then I found photos like this online, and I thought that this could, this could work. Um, so I started you know, carefully considering coming here, and I uh, came for a visit. It was beautiful about this time of year, actually a little later, close to, closer to November, and the, but the leaves were still changing. Beautiful scene. Saw pictures like this. Uh, you know, the Lafayette Presbyterian Church there on Elmwood Avenue, and it seemed quite manageable. Then I found my station, and I Googled it, and then we arrived, and I thought, oh, what a beautiful mid-century modern building. <laughs> a 1959 construction on what was then the suburb, and then known as WBEN-TV. And the building is not what struck me, but what struck me about Buffalo was the unique history, not just with the buildings, but also uh, the broadcasting history. And I went into our archives last week and did a little digging, including this gem that I found. Uh, Channel 4 has such a unique history here in Western New York. And this is from one of our live broadcasts from Niagara Falls. I can't tell you whether this is the first broadcast, but there was a live broadcast in 1948, uh, one of the first times that people saw the falls in their homes. And then there's our history with CBS. Look at that technology. Uh, Channel 4 indeed has, has quite the history uh, with the rocket pack there on the, the man's back, if you'll see that. So, so technology was a huge part of what, what you know, brought me here and the history of Channel 4. I've got a, a next shot here showing our newsroom. Uh, this was right after we opened the Elmwood Avenue location in 1959. Uh, you may not know, but prior to that, Channel 4 was located right across the street on the top floor of the Statler. That was WBEN's first location um, on the top floor there. So inside the newsroom, my house so much has changed. You can see them on the far left working on the film. And now I want to show you some of our first remote broadcasts. This is one of our cameras inside St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, the first live broadcast we brought uh, before we even signed on the air officially, was in 1948, May 13th of 1948, at St. Paul's Cathedral when we were installing, the Episcopal Church was installing a new bishop. And here comes my connection to church <laughs> architecture. Uh, this is from our live broadcast outside, still some snow on the ground, the production truck and all. St. Paul's Cathedral was one of the first places I looked at. Uh, I'm Episcopalian, and so there's a history there as well. I'm a church organist. So here comes the rest of the story, uh, hence the degree in music. We're familiar, many of you, with the uh, Upjohn construction there, uh, the building that dates to 1849, uh, but was heavily damaged by fire uh, in the late 1880s. It was reconstructed in 1891. One of the gems uh, right behind us here as I look out the window. Wow. I have had the privilege on a couple of occasions of playing there uh, as the organist, uh, as a substitute organist. It's the home of a Schlicker organ. Uh, Schlicker was a builder here in Buffalo, and part of, um, I would say, my history also involves uh, organ music and organ building. And it, I have a great interest. There's the, the console at the front, and if you've ever been inside, there's a wonderful uh, front organ in the chancel, and then the gallery organ there in the back. Uh, again, that was Schlicker was a, a Buffalo organ builder, so that was uh, something that really piqued my interest. I am the uh, part-time organist and choir master at a wonderful church in East Aurora. Uh, this is a 1927 construction by Robert North, St. Matthias Episcopal Church, and it has a unique organ in our area as well. If you're familiar at all with organs, uh, the one you're about to see in the back is uh, a 1971 instrument that was built by a firm out of Cleveland. It's one of the few organs of its type in Western New York because it is a tracker instrument, meaning that when you press the key down, it's directly connected to the air that goes into the pipe. Direct action there uh, connected with the trackers. So I want to come back to my, my reporting. One thing that I get to do is, is travel around and go to cool locations, places that you may not normally see. This is one of my favorite photos I've taken in the almost two years that I've been here. Small Chapel, this is in Orleans County, uh, in an area where I was doing a, a story about uh, chemical contamination. Imagine that here in western New York. Uh, this is just, just two miles from an area where uh, the EPA is in the process of uh, buying out homes. So this is one of the scenes, uh, that one, that we just saw. Uh, I do a lot of reporting. I do the morning show. This was uh, some of our live broadcasting from Coca-Cola Field this past spring. As I said, you know, we get to see things that, that sometimes 
um, we forget how wonderful the access that we have um, is as journalists. So in conclusion, as we wrap up here, I want to let you know that I welcome, uh, welcome your story ideas. You can always find me, uh, connect with me online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. This was uh, last, uh, last August when President Obama visited UV. Uh, one of the highlights of my career here, getting to uh, report live and, and carry that broadcast. Um, this is my co-anchor, Teresa Weekly, who you may see in the mornings. We get a lot of questions. She just had her baby uh, in late August, and uh, not our baby. I, I, let, me make that, let me make that clear for the tape. Um, she's, she's just my work wife. Um, she will be back on the air with us next week. So. Um, we certainly have missed her. And I wanted to give you a wide shot, finally, of our studio. This is still inside the beautiful 1959 building on North Elmwood Avenue. Uh, our studio was reconstructed about two years ago by a company called FX out of uh, Florida. So that is where we broadcast from. You probably don't get to really see the perspective. So there you go. Thank you so much.